Hi everyone and welcome back. Okay, so I've got two paintings in one video for you in this one. Uh, they're both birds. The first one is a zebra finch and the second one is a kingfisher. Um, now I'm doing both of these paintings in an A5 watercolour travel journal and it's by Etcher. Um, I was recently, well, say recently, a couple of months ago, I was sent um, a sketchbook from a very kind member on Patreon who sent one to me as a gift to try. And I'm really impressed with this sketchbook. It's 100% cotton paper and it's a cold pressed surface. And it's quite unusual to actually find a good quality, you know, travel journal, A5 or A4 size travel journal with decent quality paper or, you know, 100% cotton paper. Um, so I was really pleasantly surprised because it's something I've been wanting for a long time, you know, to actually find a really decent quality um, travel journal. Uh, and this one's it, this one ticks all the boxes. The only place I've been able to find them in the UK is Jackson's Art Supplies and I'll leave a link to Jackson's uh, in the description below for you. Okay, so onto the painting then. So they're both watercolours but some mixed media has been used there. Um, I've used a little bit of ink, a little bit of coloured pencil, a little bit of pastel pencil and a little bit of gouache as well. Uh, but the majority of both the paintings was done um, mainly with watercolour. Um, now I'm painting in a very tight style um, with both of these paintings. I'm trying to get a really nice texture on the feathers uh, and try and capture all the detail in there. Uh, so for that I'm using these very cheap brushes that I got from Amazon. They're by eBoot. Um, you've probably seen me using them before. I've been using them now for several months and they're perfect for this type of painting. Um, so if you're looking for a really cheap um, set of brushes that work really well really nice quality they're just synthetic um, but they don't cost a lot and I found them to be absolutely brilliant now this video um, it's just going to be a brief overview of these two paintings obviously they took a lot longer than you know the 10 minutes of this video um, but the full lessons for both of them are over on my patreon channel um, all in real time and I talk you through the whole process so you can follow along nice and easily um, and for only four dollars a month you get access to all of the back catalogue and I think there's over 500 videos on there now um, there's a section there full of reference photos for you as well to use um, there's a community section there where you can share your artwork and see the artwork um, of all the other members it's a fantastic place to be like I say there's so much content over there there's lots and lots of um, full-length videos um, and projects for you to draw along with, paint along with, uh, graphite landscapes, watercolour landscapes. Um, we've, we've got a thing going called Sketchbook Corner, which is um, specifically designed for beginners and people that haven't got much time. Um, there's tips and techniques videos, we have Q&A videos, all sorts. So if you're interested in any of that um, and just joining a community of like-minded people, um, I'll leave a link to Patreon in the end screen cards and I'll also leave a link in the description for you as well. So just click on either of those and that will take you straight to my Patreon page and you can have a good old look there um, to see what you can get. Okay, so on with the painting then. <laughs> just about finished it. <laughs> um, I should probably just quickly mention as well the colours that I'm using. Um, I'm using a combination of artist quality and student quality paints by Winsor & Newton. And I'm using some Van Gogh paint there and I'm also using a few of my own handmade paints um, so it's a bit of a selection of um, various grades and qualities of paints going on there but I, I talk about the colours and the colour mixes that I use um, during the lessons on Patreon there so all that information will be over on Patreon okay so we're just about finished the zebra finch now a few final touches there and then we'll be going in with just a little bit of white gouache um, just to get the, the white spots there um, on the side of the zebra finch. It looks like I decided to paint the feet in <laughs> before I put the spots on. That's okay, you'll see it in a minute. There we go, we're just painting a few little spots in there, look just on the flanks. And uh, then we can call that one done. Took a couple of hours to do, um, didn't take too long, but the fact it's quite a tight painting, you know, it took longer than it would if it was a loose painting, so there's quite a bit of work involved in that. 
But anyway, I hope you like that. Right, so the second one is going to be a Kingfisher. Um, very similar to what we've already done with the Zebra Finch there. I'm using the same material, same sketchbook, same paint, same everything. And I'm just freehand drawing, well, freehand drawing both of the birds in actually. I'm just freehand drawing this one in with a 2H pencil. I prefer to start with a 2H on watercolour paper when I'm freehand drawing because if I make any mistakes, they're easily erased and I don't get left with a dark line um, which shows through the watercolour. And then once I'm happy with um, the sketch or the outlines, I go over it with an HB mechanical pencil. It's got a finer tip in there and it's obviously darker. And I just really find the lines a little bit more um, so that I can see where I'm going with the watercolour. Okay, so again we've got the background drops in there and I'm just starting to work on the perch now. Um, again, I'm using these detailed brushes. They come in a range of sizes actually. You can get them right up to a size 6 to a minus 10. Um, you know, 10 zero, which is very, very fine. It's just like two bristles. So it's like I said, they're a good set of brushes to have for this because you, you're kind of covered uh, with all the sizes that you'll ever need for this style of painting. The Kingfisher actually took quite a bit longer actually than the Zebra Finch. Um, I spent a lot more time trying to get a lot of detail in there with the very subtle markings and very subtle shading uh, on its chest area. Um, just working on the chest area now, I'm using a size 6 brush for that, just to kind of block that in fairly quickly, um, just as an underpainting and an initial layer just to kind of start building the texture slowly on. Um, so I'm just keeping it fairly light there, it's just a wash of yellow ochre and cadmium yellow. Um, just put on wet into wet there, just letting it run into each other so we get nice soft edges. I'm just starting to warm the colours up a little bit while it's still wet just putting the, the paint on there just letting it float in if I'm getting any hard edges drying anywhere I just clean the brush and just use it very damp on the side on the edge sort of thing of the of the wet sorry of the dry paint just to kind of soften the edge a little bit just so I get a nice soft feathery look instead of any hard edges you've got to remember as well that every painting um, pretty much every drawing when you start there's always that ugly stage you know the one that you have to go through the one that you look at your painting you think oh dear it's ruined and it's not it's just the underpainting stage you know if you're working in layers uh, I mean some people don't work in layers they just get the color and the tone in one hit and it's done but the style of painting I do I use a lot of glazing which are very very thin washes of watercolour applied on top of each other. Sometimes I use it um, to texture. Instead of actually glazing with one flat wash, I'll just use very very small brush strokes and just build the, the very light washes up very slowly um, on top you know, of an underpainting. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm using the, the warmth of the yellow to kind of glow through um, the shadow parts there on the breast. It gives a much nicer effect um, particularly if you let the first layer dry and you don't go in wet into wet you know with the darker colours you get more of a layered look a more professional look to the watercolour than just trying to get it all done in one go I mean that's not a hard and fast rule or anything like that um, layering up I mean you can get lovely results just painting wet into wet but I'm just talking in the context of uh, painting textures like this on these birds you know if you let each layer dry and then you very carefully layer up with the darker tones and adding the texture as you go you just get a nicer look than trying to actually get everything in there wet into wet because sometimes it's hard to control um, you know when you're talking very fine detail like this so this layered approach and building up the texture gradually will work a lot better in my opinion uh, for subjects like this and you can see look the I'm using a rigger brush now which is even finer um, another new set of brushes I've just bought <laughs> when will I ever stop buying brushes and art supplies I don't know but anyway I'm just giving these a quick run out just to see what they're like I've not really used them too much but I thought well I'll give them a quick test now and uh, I'll talk about these um, in another video 
for now. Anyway, the painting's just about finished. I'm just adding the last few um, touches of detail. And I'm just adding some gouache now. I did actually use a little bit of coloured pencil as well, but I'm just applying a little bit of gouache now just to pull out a little bit more texture and some of the highlights and some of the looser feathers which are just kind of sticking out a little bit in that darker area there, just catching the light. So the gouache was ideal for that. I'm just strengthening the yellows up a little bit more there with a the coloured pencil. And we can just about call that one done. So there we go, there's the finished painting. Hope you like that. And like I say, if you want to join Patreon, um, there'll be a link in the end screen cards for you now, and there'll be a link in the description below. And I look forward to seeing you over there. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.